Welcome to our Wednesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm continuing to teach on financial stewardship. I have a book on this, CDs, DVDs, a USB. We've even got some DVDs where people receive this truth and it caused them to prosper. And so we've got two DVDs that I have, I, I think it has four or five testimonies on each one of people and we're making those available. And then I've got this brief little booklet. This is just a, a summary of this larger book. This is 166 pages. This is 50 pages. And we're giving this away as a free gift because I just want you to get these truths. This is available for a donation of any amount. Uh, we, we won't deny it to people that don't give, you know, uh, the suggested donation, but we encourage you to give something because it costs a lot of money. We'll put out about 50 or 60,000 of each one of these books uh, during this series, and we couldn't do that if nobody gave. So anyway, I encourage you to please get hold of these materials. This is now my third day to be teaching on this. The very first day, basically what I did was try and separate myself from people who use uh, teaching on prosperity for just selfish purposes. And people are immediately thinking, you're just preaching greed and stuff. And I tried to deal with those objections the first day. Then yesterday I started teaching out of Luke chapter 16, this parable that Jesus gave about a rich man who had a steward who was stealing money from him. He heard the accusations against his steward. And so he uh, said, put your books in order, and if what I've heard is correct, you're going to be fired. And the man was guilty, and so he decided what he would do. Before he got fired, he would still steal money from his master, but instead of putting it in his pocket, he would start using this money to bribe other people. So he called in every person who owed his master money, and he started discounting their debts from anywhere from 20 to 50%. And the logic behind that was when he got fired, he'd be able to go knock on their door and say, do you remember what I did for you? Can I come stay with you for a while? Could you feed me? Could you give me some money? He was still stealing money, but he was bribing people with it. He was using that money to influence people so that in the future when he got fired, he'd be able to go mooch off of them. So that's basically the parable. The thing that was confusing to me for so long is the eighth verse of Luke chapter 16, because in this verse it says, And the Lord commended the unjust steward, because he had done wisely, for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. And this is what I talked about yesterday. There's two things in this eighth verse that have just really become revelation to me. The first thing is the master's response. It's unusual that somebody who's having someone steal from them could be detached enough from that money that they could find something to compliment the thief over. Now, this isn't uh, putting your stamp of approval on thievery. The guy was going to fire him. So it's not like he approved of what he did, but finally he saw that this guy had done something wise. What was it that this master commended the unjust steward over? And this is something that you may need to think a little bit to get this. Most people, you know, when it comes to Christianity, they just want to be inspired. They want to have a goose bump or something like that, but they don't want to have to use their head for something besides a hat rack. They don't want to think. They just want to be, you know, have some kind of an emotional experience. But you have to think, this man, what he had done that was wise that his master commanded him, commended him for was the fact that finally he began to realize that money gives you power to influence your future. Now that is an amazing statement that not everybody understands. Did you know today in our world, we have such easy credit and we have credit cards and we have things that you can buy stuff and you can go ahead and get your furniture or get something and have no payments for a year. And we have this instant gratification. We have fast food. We have all of these things. It's all become a convenience in society. And people have just adjusted to this to where they don't, they don't think about the future. They just think about, what can I get right now? Somebody wants a car right now. And instead of getting a car that they can afford, 
they can go down there. And I can guarantee you, if you're a warm body and if you haven't done something really, really bad, you can get a car on credit. And if your credit's bad, what they'll do is just jack up the interest rate on you and things like this. But most people can qualify to get something, but you're going to wind up paying extra for it. I remember one time when we bought a house, the very first house that I ever bought, uh, I got a VA loan and I remember sitting down and signing the papers and there was something that it was like a legal requirement that they had to show us what the payout at the end of 30 years would be. And I forget now the details, but it, we were going to wind up paying twice what that house was worth because we were paying it off in time. So let's, you know, my house I think was around uh, $60,000 when I built this house. It was probably a $120,000 house, but a guy uh, helped me to build it and just basically gave it to me uh, for nothing but the cost. And so it was $60,000 I paid for this house, but it was going to wind up being $120,000 by the time I got the thing paid out or more. And uh, so anyway, my wife and I, we wound up doubling up on our payments and we got the thing paid off, I think, in 12 years. And I've been out of debt for 20 years. I haven't owed for anything. But I'm saying this. See, this is what most people do. They just think, uh, you know, I can go ahead and get this sixty or $70,000 car. And, of course, you don't have the money for it. So what you do, you wind up going in debt and you wind up paying over $100,000 for it. Whereas if you had just gone, maybe you only had $5,000 and so you go get something that maybe isn't the best, but you take the money you would have been making on payments and you set it aside. And then when you, it comes time, you go and you buy something that's worth $10,000 and then you work up to, and eventually you get to where you're paying for your cars uh, in cash. You get a better deal that way. You don't pay all of this interest. But most people today, they, they don't look at interest as being a, a bad thing. Did you know if you buy a car and drive it off the showroom lot, you've just lost $10,000 by the time you get out to the main street. That's how much that thing decreases. That is not an appreciating asset. It's a decrease, decreasing asset, depreciating. And it's not good stewardship. But see, most people don't think about the future. People will take credit cards and they will make the minimum payment and again, I've seen the statistics on this. I won't be able to quote it exactly, but people who pay the minimum payment on a credit card are going to wind up in so much debt that you just cannot sustain that. And yet people will, they just want instant gratification. See, that's what this guy had done. He had stolen money from his master before. And you can see in the third verse of chapter 16, he says, what am I going to do? My master's taken away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig to beg. I'm ashamed. You know what that's saying? That's saying he hadn't invested this money. He hadn't saved it. He hadn't put it into some place. He had blown it. He had been buying caviar and fancy clothes and cars and DVDs, flat screen TVs. He had been blowing it on things that you could not live off of. He hadn't saved a bit of his money. But when he was facing getting fired and being out on the street and he didn't want to beg and he, he didn't want to work manual labor, what he did, he started using money to influence people. And that's the reason that his master commended him. He says, finally, you've realized that the greatest use of your money isn't for just temporary things, but it's for the future. Now, he was talking about in this physical life future, but Jesus goes on. Here's Jesus' application of this in verse 9. The reason he gave this parable, he says, And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness. You know, I'm reading out of the King James, and boy, this just does not seem to communicate to most people, and they won't put the effort into it to think about it and look it up. But mammon was the name of a demon god that controlled money, and so it was a term that was used to refer to money. So use money to make friends so that when you fail, and that word fail here is the exact same word that's translated die in other places in Scripture. So this is saying use money to make friends with people, to touch people's lives so that when you die, they will receive you into everlasting habitations. 
What this is talking about is that this master commended the servant because finally he had recognized, he had control of this huge amount of money and he had been stealing part of it, but he had just been blowing it on temporary things that you can't live off of those things. But when he was faced with getting fired, he finally said, all right, I'm going to use this money and the position that I have, this influence, to start influencing people with this money so that when I'm fired, I can mooch off of them. He started thinking about his future. And that's the reason his master commended him. Jesus is saying we need to use money, not just for this physical world future, but for our eternal future. So you need to touch people's lives so that when you die, they will be lined up to welcome you in to heaven. You know, there's a song that I'll spare you. I'm not going to sing it, but the song is basically about a man who had a dream, and in this dream he went to heaven, and when he got to heaven, there was people lined up to thank him, and people started saying, thank you for giving to the Lord. I'm a life that was changed. And this man started saying, when did I ever touch you as somebody from a different nation? And the man said that when you gave to that missionary that came to your church and you gave money to him, he used that money to bring the gospel to me. And I'm a life that was changed. And that's what this song is about. And that's, that song is taken from this passage of Scripture. And this is literally what Jesus was saying we need to do with money. We need to recognize that money gives us power to influence our future, our physical future, but as well as our spiritual, eternal future. Look at it this way. You can take money, something that is temporary. There isn't going to be money in heaven. I saw a little cartoon about a guy that was going to the pearly gates. You know, he had died, and he had a suitcase. And the angel said, what did you bring a suitcase up here for? And he says, I brought all of this, all of my riches, and so he opens up the suitcase and the angel looks at it and he says, you brought pavement up here? <laughs> and the logic was that the streets in heaven are paved with gold. Man, what we consider riches and stuff here, there aren't going to be riches in heaven. It's, it means nothing. But you can take something, money, that is going to someday be gone. If it's paper money, it's going to burn up. If it's gold and silver, it's going to melt and it'll eventually burn up. It doesn't matter if it's... Uh, you know, if it's diamonds or anything like that, everything in this world is someday going to be gone away. It's going to melt away with fervent heat is what the Scripture says. But you can take this money, these riches that are temporary, that won't last beyond this earth, and you can turn them into something eternal. Think about that. You can take something temporary and turn it into something eternal. How do you do that? by investing in people's lives, by touching people. And of course, I think one of the greatest ways to touch people isn't with just physical things, although that's a part of it, but it's to share the gospel with them. When you invest money into your church, into a ministry, when you invest into a missionary that is changing people's lives, did you know that that money that you give to them, that money never leaves your life? It just enters into your future, your eternal future, and someday you will receive people coming to you and thanking you for the money that you invested. So you can take something that's temporary, that isn't going to last, and turn it into something eternal. I tell you, if you understand this, it is not foolish to take something that you can't keep and turn it into something that you could never lose. Man, that is profound. And most people don't look at money that way. Again, most people are just like this servant, this steward, that you just look at money for this life. So you get you things, you get you toys, and you have all of these things. You know, how many bathrooms do you have to have to be able to take care of business? Sooner or later, you just need to come to a place to where you're content. I've actually been to places overseas that their, their uh, entire house isn't as big as some people's bathrooms here in the United States that I've been into. Now, again, I'm not saying that God doesn't want you to prosper and have things, but that shouldn't be your focus. Your focus ought to be on God. How much can I take and give? I'm supposed to take care of my family. I'm supposed to, you don't mind me having things. God is El Shaddai not El Chipo. 
AND SO I'M NOT SAYING THAT YOU LIVE IN POVERTY. I'M NOT AGAINST PEOPLE HAVING BIG HOUSES AND THINGS LIKE THAT, BUT THAT SHOULDN'T BE YOUR FOCUS. YOUR FOCUS OUGHT TO BE, GOD, YOU'VE GIVEN ME THESE RESOURCES, AND HOW CAN I USE THIS TO TOUCH PEOPLE'S LIVES, TO MAKE FRIENDS OUT OF THIS MONEY SO THAT WHEN I GO TO HEAVEN, THERE WILL BE PEOPLE. I'M GOING TO BE BRINGING PEOPLE TO HEAVEN WITH ME. YOU KNOW, THERE'S NO BAD WAY TO GET TO HEAVEN. SO IF YOU JUST BARELY SQUEAK INTO HEAVEN, AND IF YOU'VE NEVER GIVEN A THING, AND IF YOU'VE NEVER TOUCHED ANOTHER PERSON, AND YET YOU GET TO HEAVEN, IT'S STILL GOING TO BE A GOOD DEAL. BUT I GUARANTEE YOU, I DON'T WANT TO JUST BARELY GET THERE. I WANT TO BRING PEOPLE WITH ME. I WANT TO HAVE PEOPLE'S LIVES THAT I'VE TOUCHED. YOU KNOW, WHEN uh, BILLY GRAHAM DIED, I, I THOUGHT OF THIS VERSE, AND I THOUGHT, I WONDER HOW MANY PEOPLE WERE LINED UP TO WELCOME BILLY GRAHAM INTO ETERNITY. MAN, HE PREACHED TO WHO KNOWS, MILLIONS AND MILLIONS, HUNDREDS OF MILLIONS OF PEOPLE. HE PROBABLY SAW MILLIONS OF PEOPLE BORN AGAIN. DID YOU KNOW ALL OF THOSE PEOPLE WHO HAD ALREADY PRECEDED HIM IN DEATH WERE LINED UP TO WELCOME HIM INTO HEAVEN? HE USED THE RESOURCES THAT GOD GAVE HIM TO PREACH THE GOSPEL, TO GO ON TELEVISION, TO GO ON RADIO, TO PUT OUT MATERIALS, TO HOLD CRUSADES, TO DO THINGS. AND BECAUSE OF IT, I GUARANTEE YOU, THE LINE WAS PROBABLY OUT OF SIGHT OF PEOPLE WELCOMING HIM INTO HEAVEN. NOW, AGAIN, THERE'S NO BAD WAY TO GET TO HEAVEN, BUT WOULDN'T YOU LIKE TO HAVE PEOPLE THAT YOU'VE TOUCHED THEIR LIFE? THIS IS THE PURPOSE OF THIS PARABLE. THIS IS WHY JESUS GAVE IT. HE SAYS, JUST LIKE THIS MAN WHO HAD BEEN WASTING ALL OF THIS MONEY THAT HE HAD STOLEN, BUT HE HAD JUST BEEN BLOWING IT ON TEMPORARY THINGS, THERE WAS NOTHING TO SHOW FOR IT, FINALLY, HE WAS FORCED INTO USING THAT MONEY TO INFLUENCE HIS FUTURE. AND THIS IS WHAT HE'S SAYING. YOU LIKEWISE NEED TO USE THE MONEY THAT GOD HAS ENTRUSTED YOU WITH TO TOUCH PEOPLE. NOW, AGAIN, GOD DOESN'T MIND YOU HAVING THINGS, BUT IT OUGHT TO BE THAT YOU SEEK FIRST THE KINGDOM OF GOD. AND I PROMISE YOU, ONCE YOU START DOING THIS, AND IF YOU PUT GOD FIRST, GOD IS NEVER GOING TO LET YOU OUT GIVE HIM. IF YOU START GIVING, GOD IS GOING TO GIVE BACK TO YOU, I GUARANTEE YOU, MANY, MANY, MANY TIMES OVER. I KNOW SOME FRIENDS OF MINE THAT LIVE IN, I MEAN, MANSIONS BY ANYBODY'S STANDARD, AND uh, THEY GET CRITICIZED. AND I'VE HEARD MANY PEOPLE CRITICIZE THEM. I'VE SEEN THEM ON NEWS BROADCAST, AND PEOPLE CRITICIZE THEM FOR THEIR STANDARD OF LIVING. BUT WHAT THEY DON'T RECOGNIZE IS HOW MUCH THESE PEOPLE HAVE GIVEN. NEVER CRITICIZE A PERSON'S HARVEST UNTIL YOU SEE HOW MUCH SEED THEY PLANTED. THIS ONE FRIEND OF MINE IN PARTICULAR, he, THEY WERE CRITICIZING HIM BECAUSE HE LIVES IN A $2 MILLION HOME, AND HE'S A PREACHER AND DRIVES FANCY CARS, AND HE WAS SPEAKING HERE AT MY BIBLE COLLEGE, AND SO I GOT TO TALKING TO HIM ABOUT THIS, AND, and THERE HAD JUST BEEN A NEWSPAPER ARTICLE AGAINST HIM. AND I SAID, WHAT PEOPLE DON'T REALIZE IS THAT YOU'VE GIVEN, AND YOU'VE GIVEN AWAY SO MANY uh, CARS AND STUFF. I TOLD HIM, I SAID, MY WIFE AND I HAVE PROBABLY GIVEN AWAY A DOZEN CARS, BRAND NEW CARS THAT WE GIVE TO OTHER PEOPLE JUST TO BE A BLESSING TO THEM. AND THIS GUY, HE PROBABLY WOULDN'T SAY THESE THINGS PUBLICLY, AND THAT'S THE REASON I'M NOT USING HIS NAME, BUT IN PRIVATE, HE TOLD ME, HE SAYS, I'VE PROBABLY GIVEN AWAY TWO OR THREE HUNDRED CARS TO OTHER PEOPLE. AND BECAUSE OF IT, HE DROVE A VERY NICE CAR. AND THEN WE GOT TO TALKING ABOUT HIS HOUSE, AND HE LIVED IN THIS MANSION, BUT HE HAS PROBABLY BOUGHT A HUNDRED HOUSES FOR OTHER PEOPLE. NOW, HE DIDN'T START THAT WAY. HE JUST STARTED WITH ONE TIME. BUT you, IF YOU SOW CORN, YOU'LL REAP CORN. AND I'VE HEARD THAT EVERY ONE KERNEL OF CORN THAT YOU SOW, YOU GET TWO OR THREE EARS OF CORN ON A STALK, AND THERE'S LIKE 700 AND SOMETHING KERNELS OF CORN IN EACH EAR. SO YOU RECEIVE HUNDREDS OF TIMES OVER WHAT YOU SOW. AND IF A PERSON STARTS GIVING AWAY CARS, I CAN GUARANTEE YOU, YOU ARE GOING TO BE DRIVING A NICE CAR BECAUSE GOD WON'T LET YOU OUT AND GIVE HIM. IF YOU GIVE AWAY HOUSES, GOD WILL GIVE YOU NICE HOUSES. AMEN. I KNOW THAT SOME PEOPLE, THIS IS JUST SO WEIRD, BUT THIS IS EXACTLY WHAT THE WORD OF GOD TEACHES, AND THIS IS EXACTLY THE POINT THAT JESUS WAS MAKING RIGHT HERE. YOU NEED TO START USING THE MONEY THAT YOU HAVE FIRST AND FOREMOST TO PROMOTE THE KINGDOM, TO BUILD THE KINGDOM. AND SOME PEOPLE THINK, yeah, AND YEAH, AND IF I DO THAT, I'LL HAVE NOTHING. 
WELL, IF THERE WASN'T A GOD WHO SAID THAT WHEN YOU GIVE, IT WILL BE GIVEN UNTO YOU, GOOD MEASURE, PRESSED DOWN, SHAKEN TOGETHER, AND RUNNING OVER SHALL MEN GIVE INTO YOUR BOSOM. IF THERE WASN'T A GOD WHO PROMISED THAT, WELL, THEN THAT'S TRUE. IF YOU JUST LOOK AT THIS AND, AND EXTRACT GOD FROM THIS WHOLE PROCESS, WELL, THEN YES, LIKE, YOU KNOW, HERE IS WHAT YOU WANT OVER THERE, AND YOU'RE RIGHT HERE. AND IF YOU TAKE A PORTION OF THE MONEY THAT YOU'VE GOT AND GIVE IT AWAY, YOU'RE MOVING AWAY FROM YOUR GOAL, NOT TOWARDS THAT GOAL. THAT'S THE WAY IT LOOKS IN THE NATURAL. BUT IF YOU ARE, IF YOU ARE INVOLVING GOD IN YOUR GIVING AND DOING IT AS UNTO THE LORD, GOD SAID WHEN YOU GIVE, IT'LL BE, IT'LL BE GIVEN BACK TO YOU GOOD MEASURE, PRESSED DOWN, SHAKEN TOGETHER, AND RUNNING OVER, SO THAT HERE YOU ARE, HERE'S YOUR GOAL. WHEN YOU GIVE, INSTEAD OF MOVING AWAY FROM IT, YOU'RE ACTUALLY MOVING TOWARDS IT BECAUSE GOD IS GOING TO INCREASE YOU. AND I TELL YOU, I SEE THIS HAPPENING IN MY OWN LIFE. I SEE IT HAPPENING WITH OTHER PEOPLE. YOU KNOW, WE HAVE TWO DVDs RIGHT HERE THAT ARE JUST TESTIMONIES OF PEOPLE THAT TOOK THESE TRUTHS THAT WE'RE SHARING FROM THE WORD AND THEY BEGIN TO PROSPER. ONE OF THESE TESTIMONIES ARE FRIENDS OF MINE, uh, RICK AND MITZI PUDLOW, AND THEY ACTUALLY, SHE WAS EIGHT MONTHS PREGNANT AND THEY WERE SLEEPING IN A VW BUG WHEN THEY FIRST HEARD ME, AND THEY STARTED BELIEVING GOD, AND NOW HE'S GOT AN EXPORT, I IMPORT BUSINESS, AND THEY'RE MILLIONAIRES, AND GOD HAS BLESSED THEM. THEY DIDN'T SEEK TO BE MILLIONAIRES. WHAT THEY SOUGHT WAS TO BE STEWARDS AND TO BE FAITHFUL, AND AS THEY STARTED DOING WHAT GOD COMMANDED THEM TO DO, GOD BEGAN TO PROSPER AND BLESS THEM, AND IT'LL WORK FOR YOU. I TELL YOU, I'M A LIVING TESTIMONY OF THIS. I'VE GOT MY HOUSE PAID FOR. I'VE GOT MY CARS PAID FOR. WE DON'T OWE ANY MAN ANYTHING EXCEPT TO LOVE ANOTHER. AND I DIDN'T DO IT SO I COULD GET THOSE THINGS. I WAS VERY CONTENT WITH EVERYTHING THAT I HAD, BUT I JUST STARTED USING MY MONEY TO BLESS OTHER PEOPLE AND TO GIVE. AND MAN, GOD HAS BLESSED US BACK. YOU KNOW, IN THE LAST COUPLE OF YEARS, I THINK IT WAS LAST YEAR WE GAVE AWAY 150% OF OUR ANNUAL INCOME. AND THIS YEAR I'VE GIVEN AWAY 200 PERCENT OF MY ANNUAL INCOME. NOW, I CAN'T DO THAT EVERY YEAR, BUT THIS IS OUR ATTITUDE. AND WE'VE BEEN GIVING OUT OF OUR RESOURCES AND STUFF. AND I GUARANTEE YOU, YOU JUST CAN'T OUTGIVE GOD. GOD IS BLESSING MY SOCKS OFF. I KNOW SOME OF YOU THINK, YOU CAN'T LIVE THAT WAY. WELL, DON'T WAKE ME UP, BECAUSE THIS IS HOW I'M LIVING. I WANT TO THANK YOU FOR WATCHING OUR YOUTUBE CHANNEL AND THE PROGRAMS THAT WE HAVE AVAILABLE, AND I WANT TO ENCOURAGE YOU THAT YOU CAN GET THE MATERIALS THAT WE'VE OFFERED. ALSO, I'D LIKE TO ENCOURAGE YOU TO LIKE OUR PROGRAM AND SUBSCRIBE TO WHAT WE'RE DOING. WE HAVE A LOT OF MATERIAL, AND I BELIEVE IT'LL BE A REAL BLESSING TO YOU. SO THANK YOU FOR BEING A PART OF IT. GOD BLESS YOU.